everyone. So just to start off, what are we looking at? Amazon knows what Amazon uh, users buy. Rakuten knows what Rakuten users buy. But actually, one key thing in all these industries is logistics knows what everyone's doing. And that's where we're starting from. Our whole mission, or our whole story actually belongs to bringing kind of exclusive deals around the world to your home. So as a consumer, what we're trying to do is solve these kind of problems. As a buyer, buying kind of foreign products in a domestic market usually is not an easy thing to do. Either it's too expensive or they just don't have it. Other than that, logistics costs are usually prohibitively expensive if you ship things overseas using a traditional courier method. And from a merchant's perspective, kind of when they want to expand to a new market, the problem is they don't actually have necessarily the supply chain or the kind of resources, human resources, to actually deal with all the problems. And in terms of also lack of insight, as a Japanese merchant, most likely you wouldn't know what an Indian consumer would be thinking. But what we're trying to do is solve that problem with an integrated solution for marketing and logistics. What we're trying to create is a borderless transaction with an economical fee, and we're trying to showcase both brands and products to all our members around the world. And in terms of what our whole uh, working flow is, we're trying to integrate warehouse, freight, and delivery. Now, how it works for a consumer is they buy things across the world. And when they buy things, they can actually ship it to our warehouses located uh, all over the world. And then we bring it back for you, kind of in a one easy to, uh, package. And in terms of our revenue model, we actually segment into three portions. In our first, we have our bread and butter logistics. So we get paid for basically shipping one parcel to another location. Our second portion is actually marketing and advertising. As our user base grows, we actually have more people that are actively purchasing, actively buying, actively looking for new things to buy. And what we can actually do is approach merchants to talk to them about how to integrate or how to market their products into one of our markets that we're working at in Asia. And in terms of the third stage that we're moving towards is we can actually get the distribution rights for these companies to market to all these regions. So we actually get a percentage cut of every sale made through our platform or through our services. And in terms of how this relates to big data or how does this relate to data at all, we actually have a unique characteristic where we actually know basically gender, age, friends, purchasing habit, purchasing uh, patterns, everything we actually see through the customs clearance process, through the logistics process. And that's, in, that's the most valuable thing to actually for merchants because merchants basically want to know how can I sell my good? Where can I sell my good? And then we're trying to solve that all in kind of one integrated process. So one case for discrepancy, we're talking about Dyson. So Dyson on the Japan warehouse for the V10 Absolute right now is around 99,144 yen. But actually, if you buy it off the Dyson UK website right now, it's 667,000. Uh, Why is there a price gap? Why is there a price discrepancy? Usually it has to do with retail markup and also rent, like the overhead cost, something like that. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a fluid environment kind of through logistics and through our marketing channels. Now, in terms of our marketing channel, one example is actually the hair dryer. We bought this from Amazon UK at 140 bucks. Hong Kong price was about 130, uh, 1,030. We sold basically 30 in 10 seconds. And everyone was complaining, why, 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 why? We said, don't worry, you don't have to buy it through us. You can still go to amazon.com to buy it. You can buy it from any one of the various e-commerce retailers in the world. Google Pixel 2 was another example. We sold 60 phones right when it launched within two hours through our marketing through our marketing channels and our marketing partners. Now, we've expanded to seven markets right now across the world. We're expanding to three more. We're hopefully gonna take over Southeast Asia, about 80% of the market. And in terms of our sales channel, we shipped about $40 million in GMV last year uh, through various platforms. And what that basically means is these kind of companies want us to bring more of their sales, more of their products to be sold in other regions. Uh, we raised our Series A in December for 2.3 million with uh, Infinity Venture Partners leading from Japan and also MS Partners out of Singapore. And in terms of our user traffic, actually our user growth has been organic. We spent less than 1% of our budget on actually marketing. 30% of our audience is referrals. We have about 125,000 members now. We grow at about 37% per month and we have 1.5 million page views on our, all our pages and channels. And in terms of the team, there's four of us, Sheldon in logistics, Hung in operations, Ming in uh, IT, and myself from the finance background. The four of us put together, what we're trying to do is create an international-based ecosystem that makes everything easy to do, and we can become the distributors of the world. Thank you very much.
Okay. Let's give a big round of applause to our first pitch contestant of the final. Thank, thank you, you very thank you. much. Okay, you did a thank good you. job. Thank you very much. And now, without further ado, our judges will give you a very hopefully gentle Q&A. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Pretty good. Yeah. Huh, thank you very much. And uh, my question is that uh, uh, you have uh, three years experience in this area. Mm. And uh, what is the most important issue to be solved to grow more? So uh, one thing is we actually have to educate the audience because the consumers are smart. Consumers will always find the best way to do things and the cheapest way to do things. But the problem is that takes time to educate. And when you try to educate at a kind of reasonable rate, it's like a growth pattern, sticky, 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 and then kind of we blast off. So it, uh, what we notice is it takes about three months for us to expand into a new market, six months to actually take off. Um, okay, great job. Yeah, um, thank you. I'd like to know, because you're operating like physical goods, mm. um, how easy is it to scale up? You show the team of four people mm. and that you're expanding into different regions mm. throughout the world already. How easy is it to add a new region? Uh, actually, adding a new region is not actually hard because it's actually about how we pair operations with kind of the marketing. So opening a new region actually just involves moving more packages. But actually, the whole warehousing process is quite standardized from our setting. And we've actually created custom software basically in each one of our warehouses to facilitate the easier transfer of goods. Um, what you were talking about in terms of uh, kind of expansion issues that we've seen, when we go into a new market, actually finding talent is very important. Because in this kind of field, it's not something easy or it's not something that's super sexy. It's not, it's not uh, kind of a Bitcoin. It's not kind of blocker, blockchain. So you have to like, really explain hard what we're, distribu wh what we're exactly disrupting, right? We're disrupting distribution and logistics and, mar well, marketing kind of tied into distribution. And then that's kind of, it's, it's hard to sell because it's not as sexy. But once they see the business, once they s realize what kind of value it adds to kind of the customer, it kind of, it grows like crazy. Uh, you said that there was uh, 40 million of GMV already last uh, year. Yeah. Uh, can you tell how, what's your cut on that one? Uh, so actually, we haven't moved on to stage three of our uh, business revenue model. Actually, we're expanding into that zone now. One thing that we needed was critical mass. We actually have to have enough customers. Like I said, we expand to 125,000. Probably half of that grew within last year, right? So every year, we double and triple. This year, we're actually aiming to triple our kind of user base, revenue, everything. And once we do that, then we can leverage against the merchants. So now merchants are actually coming back and asking like, oh, how come you're not selling my stuff anymore? Uh, do you want to do an affiliate program? Do you want to work with us? Like, we're glad to share that kind of conversation with them. Who, who will be your competition in, in three, four years? Uh, in terms of competition, so maybe running out of time. Uh, the competition in our main side would be... Uh, we are sorry, sorry to cut okay. you off, but yeah. that's all the time we have. Okay, so let's give a big round of applause to our first Thank star you. finalist today, Bayern Thank you Chef. very much. Thank you Thank so you much. You did much. a great job.